On the surface, Formula One is all about resets. Every few years, the rulebook gets rewritten, wind tunnel models get scrapped, and engineers start with a blank page. The narrative is always the same. A regulation change resets the grid, levels the playing field, and gives every team a chance to start fresh. That's what many fans are hoping for with the 2026 overhaul, when narrower cars, smaller brakes, and revised aero rules will replace the ground effect machines we know today. If you're a Ferrari supporter, you're crossing your fingers. If you're tired of McLaren's surge, you're counting on it. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Not everything gets reset. In fact, some knowledge carries over more directly than ever. And in McLaren's case, they may have already built the single biggest advantage that will survive the transition. The system in question isn't a dramatic rear wing or a complex diffuser. It's something far subtler, hidden inside the front brake ducts of the MCL39. On paper, it's just a component used to channel cooling air to the brakes, something every team designs in-house. But in practice, McLaren has transformed it into a weapon. We've seen it in action, in variable conditions. Remember those damp-to-dry races where Norris and Piastri could pump out laps a full second quicker than anyone else? That wasn't luck, and it wasn't just driver skill. It was this system, keeping tyre temperatures inside the perfect window, while rivals flailed around on cold rubber. Now, brake ducts are what the FIA calls listed team components, meaning every team must design its own. You can't buy them, you can't copy them directly, and you certainly can't outsource them. That makes accumulated knowledge priceless. The thousands of hours McLaren has poured into this project, the data logged, the experiments run, the failures corrected, all of it carries forward into 2026, regardless of new dimensions or brake sizes. And this isn't just theory. History shows that when a team gets a head start on a listed component, think Mercedes's dual axis steering or Ferrari's 20 teen suspension tricks, it takes years for others to catch up if they ever do. Which raises the question, is McLaren about to begin the 2026 era already half a step ahead of everyone else? To understand why this matters, let's rewind. McLaren have not always been the team of clever loopholes and innovative tricks. In fact, for much of the turbo-hybrid era, they were trapped in mediocrity. A disastrous partnership with Honda, followed by years of restructuring, left them adrift. It wasn't until Andrea Stella took over leadership, and the team fully committed to exploiting every technical grey area that their rise began. The MCL 38 of 2024 was the first sign. Suddenly they were regular frontrunners, winning races on merit. But it's the MCL 39 of 2025 that has turned them into title contenders. Multiple 1-2 finishes, relentless tyre consistency, and an uncanny ability to adapt to changing track conditions. And the common denominator in every one of those scenarios? Their unique brake duct and front suspension geometry. If you think this is just about one part, you're missing the bigger story. Formula One has always rewarded teams that innovate in places others overlook. Think back to McLaren's infamous F-duct in 2010, or even earlier in 1998, when they introduced a secondary brake pedal that allowed drivers to adjust braking balance corner to corner. That system was so effective, it was banned almost immediately. This culture of technical audacity is what we're seeing again in 2025. And the crucial point is that while regulations will wipe clean some areas of car design, the FIA has already confirmed that brake ducts remain listed components. That continuity transforms McLaren's advantage from seasonal to generational. They're not just winning races in 2025, they're building a foundation of knowledge that could define the early years of the 2026 formula. For rivals hoping for a reset, that's a nightmare scenario. So how does this system actually work? At its core, McLaren have separated the lower wishbones of the front suspension rather than merging them, creating what engineers call a virtual steering axis. This geometry allows them to manipulate toe angle dynamically, essentially controlling whether the front tires point slightly inward or outward, not just during steering input, but also down the straights. Why does that matter? Because toe angle directly influences both aerodynamic drag and, more importantly, tire temperature. In qualifying trim, you want maximum grip in corners, which often means dialing in a bit of toe out. But toe out chews up tires on the straights. Conversely, in race conditions, minimizing drag with neutral toe helps tire longevity, but sacrifices turn in. What McLaren's trick system does is blend both worlds. By channeling air through a cleverly designed brake duct system and linking it subtly with steering inputs, they can shift toe angle characteristics dynamically. 
The result is a car that heats up its front tyres quickly in low grip conditions, like damp tracks, but then reverts to a neutral state on straights, preserving rubber over long stints. It's not magic, and it's not technically active suspension, which would be illegal. It's a passive system, baked into geometry and airflow management, much like Mercedes's DAS system back in 2020. The advantage is cumulative. Over one lap, maybe it's worth two tenths. Over a race distance, it could save half a pit stop. In strategic terms, that's enormous. And because this isn't a bolt-on device, but an integrated design philosophy, rivals can't just copy it overnight. They'd need months of simulations, wind tunnel testing, and on-track validation. By the time Ferrari or Mercedes develop their version, McLaren could already be building the second-generation system optimized for 2026's narrower tires and lighter chassis. That's the kind of compounding advantage championships are built on. The beauty of McLaren's brake duct system isn't just its technical cleverness, it's how it manifests strategically. Tire temperature management is the invisible hand that shapes every Grand Prix. Get it wrong and you're sliding around, unable to unlock performance. Get it right and suddenly you're controlling the entire race. McLaren's system effectively shifts the probability curve. Instead of needing perfect conditions or tyre blankets set at just the right temperature, they start every stint with confidence that the tyres will be in the operating window within a lap or two. That has cascading benefits. It allows them to undercut rivals more effectively because they don't lose time bringing new tyres up to temperature. It lets them stretch stints longer because degradation is slowed and crucially it means they can commit to aggressive strategies on variable condition weekends knowing they won't be left exposed if the track changes. Think about how many races in recent years have swung on a safety car pit stop. McLaren now maximises those opportunities. Their rivals, meanwhile, are forced into conservatism, never sure if the tyres will switch on. This is why McLaren's 1-2 finishes look so commanding. It's not just raw pace, digishuki, it's the ability to exploit every strategic scenario with total confidence in tyre behaviour. And if you zoom out to a championship context, the implications are staggering. Over a 24-race season, shaving off even a single strategic error per race could be worth 50 to 70 points. In a title fight, that's the difference between dominance and despair. Of course, Formula One isn't just a technical arms race, it's a human one, and McLaren's brake duct innovation has ripple effects far beyond TAD drawings and wind tunnel runs. For drivers, the psychological boost is immense. Lando Norris knows he can lean on the car in mixed conditions without fearing the dreaded cold tyre slide. Oscar Piastri, still refining his craft, gains confidence by racing in a car that forgives slight errors in tyre management. That matters more than most realise. Confidence translates directly into lap time. But there's another side to the drama, the pressure it creates in rival garages. Ferrari's engineers, already under scrutiny for failing to convert potential into results, now face the reality that McLaren has cracked a problem they haven't. Mercedes once the masters of clever suspension solutions now look reactive rather than innovative. And Red Bull, the gold standard of aerodynamic mastery, suddenly find themselves staring at a mechanical and thermal challenge they haven't prioritised. Inside those factories, the pressure is suffocating. Imagine being a Ferrari race engineer, watching McLaren pull a second a lap in damp conditions, knowing your car's limitations are being exposed on global television. That eats at morale. It erodes trust between departments, and it puts drivers in awkward positions, forced to explain why their rivals manage tyres so much better. Formula One history is littered with these psychological battles. When one team has a weapon others can't replicate, it's not just a technical edge, it's a mental one. And right now, McLaren hold both. Let's quantify this advantage. In 2025, McLaren's system has already delivered multiple 1-2 finishes. Each one nets them 44 points, the maximum haul. Compare that to a first-second split between rival teams and you're talking about a swing of 15 to 20 points per race. Across a season, that adds up to hundreds of points. Now, even if rivals catch up partially, the early advantage matters most. In 2026, when new regulations introduce uncertainty, McLaren could enter the season with a confidence baseline while others are firefighting. That translates into points immediately. Imagine the opening four races. If McLaren score consistent podiums while Ferrari and Red Bull scramble with setup issues, the championship could tilt decisively before the European season even begins. This is why transferable knowledge is so powerful. It front loads performance into the most chaotic period of a regulation cycle when others are least prepared. And because brake ducts are listed components, McLaren's rivals can't just buy a solution. 
they must engineer it themselves, with no guarantee it will work. If McLaren can bank even a 50-point cushion by Monaco in 2026, that advantage could snowball all year long. Remember, championships are rarely won in the final rounds, virtually they're lost in the early races when one team adapts faster than the rest. McLaren is positioning themselves to be that team. So what can rivals do? Ferrari's path is to double down on suspension geometry, but their conservative culture often makes them late adopters. Mercedes, scarred by their failed zero-pod experiment, are wary of radical concepts. Red Bull, with Adrian Newey's fingerprints still influencing aero philosophy, may choose to chase downforce efficiency rather than break duct trickery. And Aston Martin? They've shown flashes of ingenuity but lack the depth of McLaren's current R&D cycle. The only realistic short-term rival response is political. Expect lobbying within the FIA, questioning the legality of McLaren's interpretation. We've seen it before. Mercedes DAS survived one season before being outlawed. Ferrari's trick suspension was quickly banned in 2018. If rivals can't beat McLaren on track, they'll try to beat them in committee rooms. But here's the catch. By 2026, the new regulations will already be in force. Unless the FIA proactively rewrites brake duct definitions, McLaren's knowledge stands untouched. And banning it mid-season would trigger chaos. That makes political resistance risky. Which means rivals may be forced into the slower, harder path, developing their own version from scratch. And if history is any guide, playing catch-up on listed components rarely works. By the time they're competitive, McLaren could already be on to the next evolution. Looking ahead, the 2026 regulations introduce narrower tyres, smaller cars and new brake dimensions. At first glance, that might seem to erase McLaren's advantage. But think deeper. Narrower tyres make contact patch management even more critical. Lighter cars shift balance sensitivity to the front axle. In other words, the very changes meant to reset the field may amplify the value of McLaren's brake duct knowledge. They've spent years learning how to use toe angle manipulation to control tyre temperatures. That database doesn't vanish when dimensions change. It adapts. Meanwhile, rivals will be starting from scratch, recalibrating simulations and learning through painful trial and error. McLaren will already know the playbook. They'll just be editing it for new numbers. That's the real meaning of transferability. It's not about bolting the same part onto a new car. It's about carrying forward the hard-won lessons of how to exploit a design space others ignored. And if McLaren get the opening races right in 2026, they could set the tone for the entire era. Remember Mercedes in 2014? They nailed the hybrid formula from day one, and it took rivals nearly a decade to dethrone them. McLaren now stand on the brink of a similar opportunity. So where does this leave us? With a paradox. Formula One is supposed to be about resets, about fresh starts every regulation cycle. But history shows that continuity of knowledge is more powerful than any rulebook rewrite. McLaren's brake duct and suspension geometry system is the perfect example. Born in the 20 and 25 ground effect era, optimized, to, um, optimized through race winning performance and poised to transition seamlessly into the 2026 20, formula, it represents not just a clever trick, but an entire philosophy of innovation. For Lando Norris, it could mean the first sustained title challenge of his career. For Oscar Piastri, it could be the foundation that turns promise into championships. For rivals, it's a looming nightmare, the realization that even in a new era, McLaren might already have a head start. But there's one final twist. Formula One has a habit of policing innovation out of existence. If Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes decide McLaren's advantage is insurmountable, don't be surprised if political pressure mounts. The FIA may be forced to clarify regulations, just as they did with DAS, double diffusers and active suspension before it. That's the tension hanging over the paddock. Will McLaren's brake duct knowledge become the backbone of a new dynasty, or the latest in a long line of banned innovations? One thing is certain. When the lights go out in Melbourne in 2026, the first laps of the new era won't just reveal who built the fastest car. They'll reveal who carried forward the deepest knowledge. And right now, McLaren look like the team best prepared to turn continuity into dominance. So don't expect the reset to erase their advantage. Expect it to magnify it. Because in Formula One, the real race isn't just on Sunday afternoons. It's in the knowledge that survives the rule changes. And on that front, McLaren may already have crossed the finish line first.